new mystery about interstellar object 3i atlas they keep coming if 3i atlas is a comet then its anti-tail jet that is pointing towards the sun should not include streaming out gas beyond 5,000 kilometers that's roughly 3,900 miles this is what Harvard professor Avi Loeb said today, let's look into this because we do know that it does. And we have no images. It keeps doing this. We have no images from December 27th. And we will also look at another image when it was closest to Earth from December 19th. And it's stunning what we see on these images. So let's start with the first one. That is the image from December 27th. And then I'll show you quickly the other one. That is December 19th. And here you see exactly how this massive, massive anti-tail is spreading out. And what is the mystery about this, guys? How can this be still natural? Is there an explanation, guys? It's going to be interesting, I promise. And if you could do me a favor, it doesn't cost you anything. Click the like button and the hype button. That would help my channel a lot. Thank you so much. Let's dive into this. This object, comet, slash spaceship, space junk, piece of rock, whatever the heck it is, is not behaving the way a normal comet should. If 3i Atlas is really a comet, then something about its sunward jet should be impossible based on the physics that we do have in space. And it gives us a clean test to decide what it really is. That's the interesting part. So what would we expect, guys, from a regular comet? When the sun heats a comet, ice is on the comet turn directly into gas. This process is called sublimation. So it's nothing's melting, turning into water. It's turning into gas. This is sublimation. Ice near the surface, usually CO2, starts to vaporize. The gas flows out at a speed that is set by its own temperature. So at the distance of 3i Atlas from the sun, about twice the Earth distance, the gas can only go about 0.2 kilometers per second. That's roughly 450 miles per hour. And that gas is carrying dust with it. We talked about the dust particles. That is very unusual in my previous videos. I'll put everything in the end screen. I have a 3i Atlas playlist, guys. We're talking about all the mysteries. The one today isn't the only one. So let's talk about this. Gas carries the dust, but the gas can't shoot out forever, can't it? It gets pushed back by the solar wind that is pushing towards that gas. And the fast solar wind is basically the fast stream of particles from the sun. So if we use basic physics, the ram pressure balance, how this is called, let's not get into all the formulas. I'm just telling you the results. We can calculate with that how far that gas could stream out before the solar wind stops it. So what the comet does is it streams out the gas and the solar wind pushes against that gas. So by the way, normal comet tails should be pushed wider like a foggy light by the solar winds. But the strange thing is 3i Atlas ultra long anti-tail stays quite together, which is already very, very strange. So. How far could gas stream out before the solar winds stop it? The answer is about 5,000 kilometers, 3,900 miles from the nucleus of 3i Atlas. Roughly, maybe not 3,900, 3,100 miles. So this is a direct consequence of how physically gas behaves in space. In space, we know that we have Vis seen that, we have calculated that many, many times. We have proven that with other comets. So this is not a guess. 
It's predicted by like first principle physics. What do you see in these images that I shown you? So the astronomers have actually seen a very long anti-tail jet that is pointing towards the sun. Unusually long. It stretches, and here it comes, <laughs> not 5,000 kilometers, hundreds of thousands of kilometers, hundreds of thousands of miles, guys. So if 3i Atlas were a natural comet, how in the world or in space, we better say, guys, can it do that? Or let's say, I don't want to sound too like this is a spaceship. But if we assume it's a natural comet, the jet should not have streaming gas beyond about 3,100 miles or 5,000 kilometers. Beyond that distance, we talked about this, only larger dust particles could continue streaming. So 3i Atlas must have larger dust particles beyond the usual size. We have estimated and calculated that it's roughly 10 times the size of a normal comet, right? Because tiny, tiny dust and gas should be stopped by the solar wind, not go much farther. So on scales much larger than these 3,100 miles, the anti-tail should be gas-free if 3i Atlas is a natural comet. Poof! There we have it. But it is not. Instead, we see this huge and long extended jet, the anti-tail. And this is exactly where the test that I mentioned earlier comes in. So why does this all matter? So if the gas that is heated by the sunlight, that gas coming from the ice, if that is the only thing that is pushing material out slash natural comet, then the gas should stop streaming at roughly 5,000 kilometers, 3,100 miles, and only dust particles should fly farther. Dust, not the gas. We talked about the dust, dust, because the particles seem to be larger, 10 times larger. But if the jet of gas and particles is launched by something else, whatever the heck it is, like something like a technological thruster, then gas could go much farther. So for example, and, and we know that this is physics, right? I'm not saying 3i Atlas is a spaceship, but still no explanations from NASA or anybody why it is doing what it is doing. A chemical thruster with an exhaust speed of five kilometers per second could push streaming gas out to a distance of 25,000 kilometers. That's roughly like um, 17,000 miles. An iron thruster with exhaust speed of around 90 kilometers per second could push streaming gas out to roughly 100,000 kilometers, 70,000 miles or further. And that's what we're seeing, right? So those distances are much bigger than, of course, the natural 3,100 miles or 5,000 kilometers. I'm sticking with miles now. You know, if I say 3,100, it's 5,000 miles. So that's the limit for natural comet gas. But we know it's much bigger. So that means the presence of streaming gas beyond the 3,100 miles is basically a diagnostic test. If we find extended gas with certain molecules, it could tell us whether this jet is natural ice sublimation or driven by something else. And you might wonder, okay, how can we test this? This thing is so far away. We can't send a spacecraft or a probe there. Not anymore. Actually, we could have maybe if that object was discovered a little earlier, but it was discovered like only in July this year. So 
but we can still test this. How can the scientists test this? So to check for streaming gas, astronomers can do two things. They can look for molecules like CO2 or CO along, CO along the jet. They can measure how the intensity changes with the distance from the sunward jet. So we have ground-based telescopes like the Keck VLT ALMA. They could do this. Space observatories like Sphere X or Webb could also help doing this. And if those gases are detected far beyond 3,100 miles, then the simple COMATE model is severely in trouble. So this test, guys, I want to make this clear. This isn't speculation. It's clear. It's a clear physics-based test. If 3i Atlas is a normal comate, then the gas should stop streaming at about 3,100 miles from the nucleus. Beyond that, you should only see these dust particles that we talked about in my previous video, not the gas. If we do find gas streaming thousands of kilometers or miles past that point, then we can absolutely rule out natural icy sublimation physics alone. We can. So that would mean either some unknown natural mechanism is at work that we just don't know about, right? Or something non-natural is producing this jet. And we cannot see the surface of 3i Atlas. I reported about this in one of my previous videos. It's hiding under a veil of dust. We can't see it. So this test needs to be done because it can get us closer to the real nature of 3i Atlas. Already, 3i Atlas is one of the most intriguing interstellar visitor that we have ever observed, and it's only the third one. So I hope they will really do this. And again, it's not over with like December 19th was the closest point to Earth. No, we have now so many observations and data that we're waiting for. It takes a while to extract them from our spacecraft that have been observing them up there from the Mars orbiter. We're still waiting for data, right? So between now and probably March, we will get new data in that could maybe explain some of these anomalies and we maybe have a chance to find out what this thing really is guys the playlist is here in the end screen you should really check it out and subscribe and thank you for liking and hyping this video if you want to support the channel fill me up with coffee link is in the description guys i hope you had a great year 2025 and i hope 2026 is getting even better and if your year wasn't great i hope 2026 changes everything around guys stay safe stay healthy and i hope that i see you here on this channel maybe in a second if you click here or tomorrow thanks so much bye bye